Today we're learning how we can make this on and off button in PowerPoint to really give a dynamic presentation. Let's start from a blank slide. We're going to insert a circle and drag it across the screen. We want to remove the outline, so go no outline, right click, format shape, and here we want to add a gradient fill because we want to create the effect that it's a sort of a 3D button. So we go from a light gray to a little bit of a darker gray tone, and then you can play around with the settings with the colors until you find the nice balance for you. You can also adjust the slider so you get a little bit more of a light tone on the top right in our case. Duplicate the shape, position it next to each other, and hold Option and Shift to increase it from the center. Right click the large shape and send it to back. Select both shapes and position them on top of each other. Select both and add a shadow. We're going to add a drop shadow from the top left, so the shadow drops on the bottom right. And then increase the transparency so it's not that hard and the blur a little bit. 75, let's do 80 something, 85% for the transparency. And on the fill color, we're going to add a highlight on the top right. So we add an extra stop and we make it white. And then we play around with the gradient, with the setting, until we are happy with the result. And this looks quite nice. Grab both circles and put them to the left. We're going to use them in the later stage. Now we want to add a rounded rectangle on the screen. So add a rounded rectangle and increase the corners all the way until they're rounded. Remove the outline and let's give it a red color in this case. So the color for the off side of the switch. Let's add a shadow because now it's just a rounded rectangle. So let's add an inner shadow. So it looks like it's a little bit of depth into the hole. So transparency increases, it, increase the blur until you're happy with the results. And this looks about right. Maybe a little less on transparency. That is good. Center it in the middle and position the button on to the front. Right click, bring to front. And here you can see that the button nicely covers the rounded rectangle. You can adjust the size um, if you like, but let's group them together. Align, align to middle so they're evenly balanced. And now we can see that if we position the circle to the right side, and to the left side, it's like the on and off effect. Of course, with the same background, we'll look at that in a second. Okay, let's position the button to the left again and work to get the green shape or the on side of the switch. And for that, we're going to add a rectangle. We're going to cover the rounded rectangle with just a regular rectangle. I'll make it blue so it's easy to see the difference. No outline. Position it down and then create a copy of the red rounded rectangle. Position the blue box on top, right click send to back and select the rounded rectangle. Shape format, merge shapes and subtract and this way we cut a hole out of the blue rectangle. We can position the red rounded rectangle on place and send it to back so it's positioned in the back. Now we want to add the green side so we add just a rectangle and we cover only a part of the button. Remove outline and make it green. And you'll see in a minute why we do this. Select the blue shape and bring it to the front. And this way we have created some sort of a filler object where we can slide it from left to right and make sure that it fills and transitions with the button and the toggle switch. We want to give it the same or a similar drop shadow as the, um, the red rounded rectangle. So we play around with the settings until we are almost happy with the result. It shouldn't be perfect, it should be just about right. And now we want to make the blue shape white and then it disappears in the background. Grab the button and here we can see it's layered behind the white shape. So let's right click, bring to front and then it's in front of everything. Position it on top on the left side so it covers the green rectangle. And then we right click, duplicate slide and position it to the right. And then we extend the green box until it meets the middle of the circle. And next we want to select the second slide, go to transitions and morph. And here you see the effect that we want, which is the toggle switch going from green or from red to green and toggling on and off. 
Now, if we want to modify this slide, let's create a duplicate version of the first one and change the background color to something darker. Here you see the white shape. We can just change that shape to the background color and then you have created a totally different slide. You duplicate it, you position the toggle switch and you adjust the green bar. And then same as the previous one, you get a nice toggle switch, but on a different background. Now we know how to create custom backgrounds, but let's look at some repositioning and scaling of the object, because that's also important to customize a presentation. Let's create a duplicate of the first slide and then select all of the objects, so including the background image, and then right click, group them together. And this way you can easily scale the button to a smaller size or a larger size as you desire. And then you ungroup them again and then you have the correct item that you want. Now we can add some text, so let's add a text box with a welcome message. Increase the font size by quite a lot. Make it a little bit lighter gray, so it's not that sharp. Right click format shape and add a drop shadow. That will make the text jump out a little bit more. Increase the transparency a little bit. Change the blur. That looks good. Now let's create a duplicate version and change the toggle switch, change the green. And if we then add the morph transition, that will do its thing. Let's also add some text, a title and a little bit of dummy text. In your case, it can be your personal text, align to center. And then we want to duplicate this also to the first slide, but we want to create the effect that it flies in. So let's drag it off the screen, then the morph transition will do its thing. Add a morph transition to the second slide and let's preview. And now you know how to create this nice toggle on and off switch in PowerPoint to really captivate the audience. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint, make sure to look at the video which shows on screen right now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.